Remember, remember, the 8th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I can see no reason why this gunpowder season should ever be forgot. You all know where those words came from, um, not only from a, a film called V for Vendetta, but a, uh, a statement supposedly made by Guido Fawkes uh, when he tried to uh, supposedly blow up the Houses of Parliament. So, what we had um, today on uh, the 29th of October 2016 is an announcement. 11 days before the so-called presidential elections on November the 8th, in the United States, that James Comey was, he's the head of the FBI, was reopening the investigation into this saga of the degree of corruption involved in the Hillary Clinton saga. So, with Bill and Hillary combined together now, what we've just found out is a series of emails um, on an unsecure server that was located and uh, part of the, um, the Secretary of State's uh, management team a lady called Huma Abedin, uh, who is a Muslim, who just so happens to be married to a guy called Anthony Vina, who just so happens to be of the Jewish persuasion of faith. So what this asks to many is how can these states of affairs exist in such a closed environment? You have someone like Hillary Clinton and her Clinton Foundation, and you've got a uh, uh, an individual who is of uh, the Jewish faith, whose faith precludes him marrying anyone other than someone of the same faith. You have also the same tenets within the Muslim faith, and so here we have two combined. Don't forget also that Huma Abedin is of Pakistani Indian uh, heritage and spent most of her life in Saudi Arabia. So there's a very strong Saudi connection there. Uh, and also then with a very strong Zionist Judaic connection through to Vina and the crowd. Even uh, the vice president, for all his lack of work, uh, Biden, has come out and said he was never a supporter of, uh, of uh, Vina being involved uh, in the White House team in any capacity. So the long and short of it is these sexting emails have come to pass, and so now we have a situation where the election is potentially compromised. Now, what it seems is that um, the FBI will not in open this investigation unless they really do have grounds to do so. So what we could see potentially here, and we will almost certainly see, is that sometime within the not too distant future, Hillary Clinton is going to be indicted, a grand jury is going to be set up, and she is going to be put on trial either before January the 17th, 2017, or she's going to be put on trial after that date. So why those dates are important is the following. Um, it all comes down to what's supposed to be happening on the 8th of November. On the 8th of November, that will be approximately 5,539 days after an event that happened in September 2001 commonly referred to as 9-11. Now, as on November the 8th, 2016, we are going to be having a, um, uh, an election. The actual results won't come out until the 9th, the 9th of the month of November, which is the 11th month. So my prediction here is that we are going to have the second 9-11 on the 9th of November, following the election in the United States on the 8th. Now, why this is going to be important is probably one of four things are going to happen here. One is that Hillary Clinton will win the election, having rigged the, 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 the votes or the, through the polling booths using the, um, the Smartmatic system in part that is run by George Soros and Lord Malak Brown, the British Lord, uh, through his company. That's one possibility. That will cause mayhem, because Donald Trump has already declared that he would not accept such a result. Secondly, it could be that Hillary Clinton loses the, out, the election outright, and we have Donald Trump coming into power 
and that being allowed to be accepted because of what's happening now with the FBI investigation. A third possibility is that there is some civil disorder at the time or shortly after the election which causes uh, a, a quite a considerable degree of civil unrest within the United States and maybe internationally, who knows, where we end up with the fourth scenario, three and a half to fourth scenario, is that Obama, the incumbent president of the Democratic Party, the Democrats, ends up causing a, or facilitating the, the stealing of the election by creating uh, a state of emergency in the United States, either because of civil unrest or perhaps something else, to ensure that this fourth scenario keeps the elite, the new world order, the globalist agenda on track by Obama remaining in office for a third term. Now, don't forget, though the elections finish or will complete on the 8th or the 9th of November, the inauguration date isn't until January the 17th, 2017, which is quite a long period. Now, what might be very interesting to people to know is that An executive order was signed by Barack Obama, or to give him his true name, Barry Sotero, and his transgender uh, husband, wife, um, Michael. Uh, this was actually, this executive order on the 13th, copy of which I have here, and you can go and have a look on the, the White House uh, website under executive orders. This is stated as an executive order coordinating efforts to prepare the nation for space weather events. It's a 120 day reporting cycle. And what it asks is all the various state agencies in the United States to make reports to Barack Obama or Barry Sotero as he's probably better called to inform him of the state of preparedness for overcoming solar activity or possibly EMP, electromagnetic pulse radiation, into the United States. Now, why this is important is this could be in part something whereby what the incumbent president is going to try and do in association with the New World Order, the elite, the globalist agenda, the Soroses, the Kissingers, the Brzezkis, is to ensure that the agenda carries on rolling and that we end up in a state of conflict and we end up in a state of possible war caused by a possible cyber attack. Now, it may be that this cyber attack could be arranged by someone from Russia attacking the networks in the United States. However, it could also be a false flag, but almost of a natural cause. There's an EMP pulse from solar weather. It causes a downing of the grid, which then results in the Russians being blamed for an attack on the United States, which then conveniently allows Barack Obama to stay in office. And also, what that would mean is that the financial markets would go to free fall and a tumble mode. And with that domino effect around the planet, we would end up in a position whereby Ordo Ab Cow, or order through chaos, would prevail and a problem, reaction, solution philosophy would be implemented and there would be global panic. So that's what I think because one of the major points here is why is Obama requesting a 120 day reporting window when in fact he will be out of office on January the 17th when the next president is sworn in. So it could be that Donald Trump actually succeeds, he ends up winning, but in the end what we see is the election is not so much stolen from him but the means for him taking the seat in the Oval Office is prevented by a so-called force majeure by external circumstances preventing it. So we'll have to wait and see whether any of these predictions come true. But the good news for now is that Julian Assange is no longer locked up in the Ecuadorian embassy. Um, the October surprise was sprung, just as he was promising it to be. Um, James Comey has released or reopened the investigation into the email scandal and the Clinton's corruption. 
So one way or the other, it would seem that they, the Clintons, are going to be sitting before a grand jury, and hopefully that's not going to be taking too long. Okay, Peter of England signing off here. Thank you.